Happy July 4th, July 4th. Happy 4th July. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your As we come together to celebrate our faith, let us acknowledge our sins. He has God for mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I get listened in my thought, in my word, the way that uh, the way that I felt to do, through my thought, through my thought, through my godly thought. Therefore, I was with Mary, all the angels, the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to our life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory, Glory to God, to God in, the in the highest. And on honor, earth, peace to, to people, people of the way. We, we praise you. you. We, we bless you. you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you, we give you thanks for your great glory. glory. Lord, Lord God, God heavenly King, King. O oh God, God Almighty Father, Father. Lord, Lord Jesus God, Christ, only be God and Son. Son God. Lord God, Lamb of Son God, of God, Son of the Father, Father. you take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. For you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who, in a best made your son, have raised up a fellow world, fill your faithful with joy, for those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. We ask this to Christ our Lord.
A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior is he, meek, riding on an ass, on a colt the foal of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished, and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. For although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed, revealed them to the little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Throughout the Gospels, Jesus tells stories to teach lessons. He uses objects in his stories that are familiar to the people he is talking to. Stories play an important part helping us to relate to someone else's situation. If I told you a story about my frustration at times with my smartphone, some of you would understand. If I told you a story about the number of times my GPS sent me down a dead-end road, some of you could relate. But if Jesus told a story about fixing a flat tire, now they would not understand what he was talking about. But the people Jesus was talking to in today's gospel did relate to and understand very well what he was talking about. They understood the significance of a yoke. They knew that a yoke was a heavy piece of wood laid across the shoulders and tied around the neck of a team of animals. They understood that a yoke allowed the team to work together to plow a field or to pull a wagon. They knew that the yoke was custom made to prevent pain and discomfort to the animals. As a carpenter, Jesus could very well have made yokes for the local people. The closest thing that I have ever seen to a yoke would be in an old Western movie when a team of horses is pulling a wagon. The bigger the wagon or heavier the load, the more horses would be tied together. This would force the animals to work together, and by working together, their load was lighter, the work easier. Since we no longer use animals to pull heavy loads, and most of us have never seen a yoke, its meaning may be lost on most of us. We have machines to do the heavy lifting and for transporting heavy loads while we sit in air-conditioned comfort. We may not be familiar with how yokes make work easier and heavier loads lighter, but we are all very familiar with how life can weigh us down. We are all familiar, familiar with the burdens of day-to-day -day living. Maybe you are burdened by the demands and expectations from others, such as the burden of responsibility of being a parent or a teacher or a healthcare worker. Maybe you're dealing with the burden of constant pain or a handicap. Maybe you're bearing the burden of alcoholism or a drug addiction. Fear of failure can weigh heavy as well as guilt. Guilt as a result of something we should have done, or guilt from something that was not even our fault. Some of you are dealing with business responsibilities, and others are dealing with the burden of strained or broken relationships. There are those that are dealing with the loss of a loved one. Maybe you are burdened with an uncontrolled temper or the burden of fear or worry 
or depression or the burden of disappointment. The older I get, the more I have difficulty trusting people. People make commitments and they don't follow through. I tell myself they are doing the best they can. I tell myself they are doing what's best for themselves. I even tell myself that expectations lead to disappointment. Disappointment in other people and disappointment in myself. The world beats us down. The world tells us where to find happiness. This happiness that the world wants to give us creates a burden of its own. Whether you realize it or not, everyone is tied to someone or something. Everyone is yoked to someone or something. Maybe you're yoked to your job that is putting more and more demands on you to the point that it's crushing you. Maybe you're yoked to a lifestyle that is weighing you down and leading you further and further in debt and further from God. Our pride, our ego pushes us to carry our burdens alone. The world tells us that we can do it on our own. We don't need anyone's help, especially not God's help. The burdens we carry are invisible, but the weight can be overwhelming. It is like trying to push a rock uphill. If you stop, the rock will roll back over you and crush you. Yet the more you push, the heavier the rock seems. Often, a burden starts out like this small rock. It's light and easy to carry. But what if I held it up for an hour? The longer I hold it, the heavier it feels. My arm will get tired. It has nothing to do with the actual weight. The burden has to do with how long I carry it. The longer you carry your burdens, the more they weigh you down. Eventually, you will not be able to carry them any longer. Jesus is offering us a helping hand. He is inviting us to team up with him. Jesus is offering each of us the opportunity to lighten our burdens placed upon us by this world. Jesus is not only offering a yoke to us, but to be yoked with him. When we take on the yoke of Jesus, we no longer carry our burdens alone. Think of it this way. Jesus is not just the teacher that gives you homework, but he is the fr also the friend that helps you to do it. In a normal yoke, the load is equally distributed between the two that are yoked together. But when we are yoked to Jesus, he carries the load. Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Let Jesus teach you what you need to know. Let Jesus guide you and direct you in your day-to-day -day activities. Let Jesus set the direction for your life. You will find rest by taking Jesus' yoke because it's a different kind of yoke. It will not always be comfortable, but the yoke of Jesus is perfectly fitted to support us and fulfilling our purpose for our lives. The rest, Jesus promises, comes from following his ways, his attitudes of living in this world. We were put here for a reason. We each have a purpose. We can spend our time self-absorbed by our own life, by our own burdens, that we miss out on the big picture. We miss out on the purpose of our life. Jesus has a plan for each one of you. Open your hearts to Jesus. Reach out to your neighbor. When you reach out in the name of Jesus, you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Do as St. Paul says in the second reading. 
Do not live in the flesh, but live in the spirit. Do not live for the burdens of this world, but live for Jesus. Every day we must put on the yoke of Jesus. Every day we must put our complete trust in him. Every day we must surrender to Jesus. Yoke yourself to Jesus. By being yoked to Jesus, we will learn from him how our lives can have meaning and purpose. There is peace in being yoked with someone good and loving and patient. Now, more than ever, we need Jesus. We need each other. We need community. Reach out to each other. Help each other. Be there for one another. Be Jesus to each other and yoke yourself together as community. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things is visible and visible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not man, conscious of the Father, to him all things about man, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, he was a cousin of Mary, and became man. For us sake was crucified, he was crucified, he suffered death, was buried, he came again, he was resurrected, he was in the city of Jesus. He ascended to heaven, and the city of the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord that giveth life, who proceed from the Father the Son, with the Father the Son is our Lord the glorified. Who has spoken to the prophet, I believe in the Holy God, the Church. I confess when I baptism forgiven the saints. I look for the world of the dead. And the life of the world to come. Amen. In perfect trust, let us bring our prayers before God. For leaders within our church, may they look to the humble and lowly for inspiration and understanding as they seek to follow Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For diplomats throughout the world, May they urge peace and work for unity among peoples. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are burdened, may they take up the yoke of Jesus and learn from him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our youth, may they discover Jesus in our community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to abortion, for the names listed in the Book of Intentions, for those held silently in our hearts, and for the seminarians of the Diocese of Owensboro, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have been called through death to eternal rest, especially Toby Gates and Francis Jean Freimeyer, and for Bud O'Brien, the intention of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, you send your Son, Jesus, to teach us the way of humility. Hear our prayers that in following him, him, we may give rest to the weary and build up the kingdom of heaven. We ask this to Christ our Lord.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O oh Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. We ask this to Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is the right to just our duty and our salvation, always, everywhere, to give you thanks, Father, most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, who sent us our Savior, a Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, and born in the Virgin. Follow faith your will, again for your holy people. He stretched out his hands as to do his passion, so to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and the the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of hosts, host, heaven and earth are full, full of glory, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and in all we are created to that play give you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the work of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You will never see to guide the people to yourself, so that from the rest of the sun to the setting, a free sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously may holy these gifts. We are brought to for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For the night was betrayed, he himself took bread. They give you thanks, he said a blessing broke the bread, and gave it to the Sao Paulo, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and gave you thanks, he said a blessing, he gave the chalice to the disciples, saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is chalice my blood, the blood of the new, and the three covenant, which be put down for you for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this yes, cup, yeah. we proclaim well, your death, O oh Lord. Until, until you come, come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, give you thanks that we have thus worthy to be your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray 
that partake the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into him by Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and William our Bishop, and their all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, we have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, and the honor of thy mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, and the all the saints, we are pleased with you to the ages, we may maybe go ahead to the life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Throw him with the hand and the hand. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all the glory and the honor is yours forever and ever. At the severest comment and form of divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who are heaven, thy love be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. They lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the risen hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not our sins, but to fill your church. May grace be grant peace and unity, and accordance to your will. We live a reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold, he who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am I'm not worthy that, that you should enter into my roof. But, but only say, say the, the word, word my soul, soul shall be healed.
cry to the Lord, O oh, you just, for praise is fitting for loyal hearts. All who labor come to me, tired and weary come to me.
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O oh Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, through faith may ever increase. We ask this to Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, Michael, the Archangel, defend us in the bottom. We are protection against the weakness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke you, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Guys, oh.